Once our power is off, there's two different ways you can drain your hot tub. The A method is to actually use the gravity drain that's on the actual hot tub itself. Or in my situation, I like to do it a little faster. So I use a sump pump, take it down to the last inch or two of water, and then I'll use the gravity drain or the tub's actual drain to do the rest. So the only other thing you're gonna need to winterize your hot tub is a good quality uh, suck and blow shop vac. Uh, I recommend at least a five horsepower shop vac. You're also gonna wanna have a couple gallons of a high grade marine antifreeze on hand because we're gonna go ahead and put antifreeze in each individual jet and maybe some down the actual filter housing at the end of the video. With adding the antifreeze, I like to have a small weed sprayer on hand. I'll put the antifreeze in the weed sprayer and this is gonna help us get the actual antifreeze into all of the individual jets themselves. If you're wondering, this hot tub right here, I'm using this one as an example. This one is about as sophisticated as they come. This one actually has three jet pumps and two secondary circ pumps, which actually one runs the heater and the ozone and the other one runs the uh, actual water features. So most of your hot tubs are either gonna be one to five pumps. Um, typically they usually have two pumps. So this one's kind of a beast. With our hot tub now drained out, the next step is we're gonna go around and we're gonna make sure all of the jets are open on them. Some hot tubs, you can actually shut the jets off and turn them on. So we wanna make sure those are all open. Another thing is we want our diverters set in the middle. So that way all the seats are open and when we force air through and do our vacuuming, we're gonna get uh, airflow through all the jets and all the seats of the hot tub. So with all of our jets open, all of our diverters set half open, uh, we should be able to start blowing out these lines. I like to start with the easiest area and that's usually your filter housings. So with the filters out, as you can see, you have two intakes at the bottom of the filters. Um, some tubs only have one filter, but that's it. We're with our shop back uh, set up to blow instead of suck. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on. And we'll just start with the one filter housing. As you can see, there's water squirting out of all these jets on this side, so we know this filter housing here, this goes to this side of the actual uh, tub. And we'll go ahead and blow these out so no more water's coming out of them. And then we'll come over to the other filter housing if you have one. And as you can see, that one's going to the actual surf pump. Anytime you have those small orifices in the footwell, it's usually for a surf pump that runs a heater or an ozone. And we'll just go till that's no longer putting water out. If you do blow down your actual filter housing lines and you get water just shooting out of the drain, directly below it or if your filter housings uh, plumbed in after the actual drain lines and you're not getting any water out of any of the jets no biggie we'll find a different way to actually blow out those lines your next bet is to actually access the equipment bay this is going to be directly uh, below the actual top side controller or the actual side of the tub that has vents on it upon looking in the equipment bay Go ahead and check to see if there's any way you can remove any split nuts or pump unions to actually access the pump itself so we can vacuum out those lines. Shop vacuuming these uh, actual lines out this way is your best bet to eliminate all the water in the hot tub. So I usually suck on the front end of the actual pump and then I'll come back through the heater side as well. If there's absolutely no way to access these pumps like this one, which is actually foamed in all the way to the front of the pump, we're going to go ahead and try to access the lines going to this pump through the diverter valves on the hot tub. Uh, all these tubs are different. Some of them are going to have these diverter valves that are easily taken apart, like these ones. And basically you're just going to pop the top off. And then there'll be a uh, locking cap. And you should be able to just pull the actual diverter out. And the next thing is I like to take these O-rings off also. So that way they don't blow down in there when you're using your shop vac or you don't suck them up. So you might need a screwdriver to actually take these out. So with our shop vac. Okay, 
But as you can see, this diverter runs that bench seat also, just like our filter housing. And it must divert the water down to that Typhoon jet because that thing's spitting out too. So we're getting more air through those uh, actual jets in that bench seating. And we're hitting that Typhoon jet down the bottom. If you end up having a tub that has the more fancy diverter valves, such as this one, this one actually controls the seats and the air. I highly recommend not getting into these. These have like three different parts. You have to take the handle off. You have to pop the top off. Then there's screws. And there's just really not a great access point to actually blow out these lines. And we'll go ahead and blow this one also. And this one's just going to this seat. We have pretty well got this seat done anyways through the filter housing. And as you can see, those jets are spinning. So that one's pretty clear also. Here we got another water feature. We'll go ahead and blow that one. And as you see that water feature is going down to the drain also as it's bubbling down there. If you have a waterfall water feature that is tough to actually get a shop vac to because it's got a narrow opening, uh, I usually go to the actual diverter valve that actually controls uh, the volume of the actual waterfall and then I'll suck that out using the shop vac. If you have a secondary person that can actually cover the actual waterfall with their hands, it'll actually help pull the water from the actual pump that feeds that waterfall. As water's getting back into the tub when we're blowing out the lines, I like to go around also and just suck up any excess water that's actually in the tub. So that way it's not going back into our actual jets and uh, filling them back in. And yeah, you're gonna have to empty water out of your shop vac periodically. Now that we've actually uh, went and blew air through all of our diverters, our filter housings, um, if we had pumps we could take apart, we vacuumed all the lines out through the pumps. We're going to get into the actual hot tub now and we're going to continue by shop vacuuming out every single one of the jets in the actual tub. This is going to reassure that there's no standing water in the bottom of the jets and pull out any other water that's in the lines, especially help get most of the water out of the actual manifolds that run the jets. When shop vacuuming out your actual jets, you'll know that they're clear when the actual hose on the shop vac stops pulsating or jerking. So I usually vacuum until I don't feel any more water coming through the lines. And you also might hear a slight gargling noise coming from the drains or the filter housings. And that's a good sign that you're getting full air through the actual lines. There is one more step that I do sometimes, and that's when I'm actually uh, vacuuming out my jets. If I hear excessive gargling coming from the drains, and you can just hear the water slopping in them and really not getting a good suction to come to the actual uh, jets themselves, I like to take the drain covers off of the actual tub and then suck those out with the shop vac also. So in this situation, I'm just gonna bring the actual shop vac in with me so I can reach this better. And that's it, you don't wanna put a shop vac up on the sides of your tubs when it's full of water. Uh, if these shop vacs fall into the tub, I've seen them actually crack a shell. We've done that before and I'm not gonna do it again. So I'm gonna bring the shop vac in Another thing that's nice, uh, I mean, we winterize all the time, so we usually use double hoses so they're longer. But in this situation, I'm just gonna bring it in with me to be safe. And we're gonna go ahead and start on this first one. And I'll go around, I'm gonna feel. So this one gets connected to this one. I can feel the air sucking, but I'm gonna plug that up. It's actually hooked up to two of them. So with those two plugged up, now I'm getting full suction through that actual drain. By plugging up the other ones and sucking through one, those drains are completely empty. I know there's no water in them. Um, and that's it. It should have helped us out getting most of the actual water out of the pumps also. So we'll go ahead 
and assemble everything back. Um, I loosened these drain caps up with the uh, electric uh, drill. Um, I highly recommend putting them back in with a hand Phillips screwdriver, just so you don't strip any of these threads out. Okay, so we find our lowest plug on the actual pump, and we're just gonna twist that out. It's either gonna have a hand twist uh, end on it, or it's gonna be like a 9 16 wrench. You're just gonna wanna take that out and let the water drain out of that pump. As you can see, there's very little water in it. So we know we did a pretty good job. Now that we've put the plugs back into our pumps, it's time to add the antifreeze. When using this antifreeze and, and actually applying it to the actual jets themselves, I like to just put a little pinhole in the actual top of the actual uh, safety seal on the actual jug, and you can actually squirt it right into the actual jets. Put it up there, give it a squirt. Each one of these jets. If you do have a weed sprayer, I would definitely use it. It makes this task a lot easier. And then that's it. We can go around. We can pour a little bit in each diverter valve. We can pour some down the actual filter housing. And that's it. It's going to go down in those. And it's going to settle into any lines that have any uh, sags in them or any low spots where water could be collecting. Normally, I use about anywhere from one to two gallons per hot tub. This one being bigger and has a lot more jets, I might use three on it. You wanna make sure you can put in as much antifreeze as you can get in these lower jets. Uh, a lot of times if you're just putting a cover on for winter, the seams and the stitchings on the cover will actually leak water if there's snow on them and you'll come out in the spring and your actual hot tub will have three to four inches of water in this foot well. So you wanna protect those lower jets as much as you can. And then I also highly recommend adding, uh, putting the cover on, strapping it down, and then putting a tarp over top of the cover to give you that extra sense of safety from water getting in the tub. And it's also gonna help with the actual uh, hot tub, keeping it safe from the environment and the elements of the winter. Thanks for joining us with Pool Elementary on our hot tub winterizing video. If you got anything out of the video, make sure you like and subscribe to help out our channel. And as always, another happy hot tub with Pool Elementary. Mm -hmm.